Hi, I want to take you through today how to start using Auto DevOps and customizing it so that you're only using the scanning jobs that you want to start off with without using all of the jobs that are part of the prescriptive Auto DevOps pipeline. Now remember, Auto DevOps as a pipeline does an automated build using Heroku or Cloud Native Build Packs. Then in the test stage, it does a whole set of security scans, um, you know, container scanning, dependency uh, scanning, um, license detection uh, for open source licenses, secret detection for any secrets stored in your repository, and then also does things like code quality scan and unit tests um, as well. And then it would um, have additional stages for deploying a review app if you're running Auto DevOps in a feature branch. Um, running DAS scans, performance testing, load, performance load testing, um, all of that. And of course, with options for deployments if you are actually merging to a master branch or default branch. For our case today, we have a simple use case that we're trying to implement. And that is that we just want to start to take advantage of a small subset of the security scans available with Auto DevOps. And in our case, we want to start off with our secrets detection scan, and we don't want to run all the other scan jobs. So once we have a project created with our code and our repository, um, you will see a, a button here on your project details page to enable auto DevOps. Here, I've already enabled it. Another way that you can enable auto DevOps is from settings, CI, CD. And there's an auto DevOps section there that you can check the box to default to an auto DevOps pipeline and save your changes. Now, if you don't integrate a Kubernetes cluster with your project or at the parent group level, then um, anything related to a running application, deploying to a review app, deploying to staging or production, or any of the jobs such as desk scanning and performance testing that require a running app, those will all be skipped. So Auto DevOps is smart enough to still run a pipeline successfully when you don't have Kubernetes enabled and just skip those jobs that require a Kubernetes integration. Now with the Auto DevOps pipeline, um, you have the ability to um, just turn everything on, which we just did by default, but then you have the ability to turn off individual uh, test scans, test jobs, uh, via environment variables. So if I go to the, the variable section of our project and expand that, you can see that I've already uh, defined a set of variables for this project. Code quality disabled, container scanning disabled, dependency scanning disabled, et cetera. Uh, these variables can have any value as long as they are defined and not empty, um, then we will, uh, these variables will take effect. So in this case, we will skip our test job because we have test disabled. And we will skip all of these other jobs that are part of the test stage of Auto DevOps as well because we have those scans disabled. Now, if you wanted to roll this out to a whole set of projects in a group, but again, you only wanted to enable one or two jobs to start with, you could turn on Auto DevOps for all of those uh, projects, but set the variables at the group level um, those group level variables will be applied. Um, so the way that variables work in GitLab is that first the, the project level variables take effect and then the group level variables take effect uh, secondarily. Okay, so that would be one way to do that. Set the variables at the group level, then just flip on auto DevOps for each of the projects underneath. Now with this setup um, so far, we have, a very simple pipeline that's going to run whenever someone pushes new code changes to um, any branch in the repository. Okay, so the way Auto DevOps works, um, as soon as changes are pushed to branches, um, we are going to run an automated pipeline. That pipeline by default looks different if you're working on your default branch versus a feature branch. But since we have disabled most everything, um, and uh, we don't have a Kubernetes cluster integrated to our project. We're only going to get a build job in the build stage and then a secret detection job in the test stage. Okay, so 
the secret detection job is the only thing left over test jobs because we've used those variables to disable all the rest of them. There's no way to disable the build job with a variable, so we do get that build job first. Now, in our use case, we only want secret detection as a scan. And secret detection actually doesn't depend at all on successfully building our code base first. So we can actually do better than this and just do secret detection without doing a build at all. That's going to save us CI minutes, it's going to save us time, um, it's going to be less confusing for end users if we're just using SCM and are just starting to introduce some security scanning as part of our workflows. But in order to do that, we actually need a CI file in each repository. We can't just turn on auto DevOps at the project level and then use variables because as I said earlier, there is no variable to disable the build. So let's go back to our project repository and take a look at that. And now let's add a GitLab CI YAML file that will only include secrets detection. Now, in this case, I've cheated a little bit. I've already created the, the baseline file that we're going to use and added it to the repository. I just have to rename it for it to take effect. Um, once I add a GitLab CI YAML file to this repository, then I don't need to set all those other variables because now, instead of running the entire pipeline by default, I'm only going to use the individual templates for the jobs that I want for Auto DevOps. So let's see how this works. Here's my uh, file that's currently named secrets.gitlabci.yaml. And we can see that we've taken a base image, some variables, defined our stages, and then there's a set of includes at the bottom here. Um, there's a set of security scan jobs that I've left um, as included, but I've commented them out, except for the secret detection uh, include template. All of these templates are provided by GitLab, so they're available to use as is. You don't have to worry about writing these jobs, maintaining them. GitLab is maintaining them regularly, updating the scanners used for each of them regularly, uh, and providing them to you to use out of the box. To use the, the um, template job, all I have to do is specify under include. Then I want to use a template and give the name of the template, in this case, security slash secret dash detection dot GitLab CI dot YAML. If you want to see what the source of that uh, template looks like, we do provide links to the source of each of these jobs as well. Now, um, in order to use our um, pipeline YAML file, instead of using Auto DevOps, we need to have the file named the appropriate way. By default with your project, uh, we're going to look for a .gitlabci.yaml file. Okay, so we're going to rename our file to this. If you were um, creating this from scratch, you would just add a file called .gitlab-ci.yaml. Um, and the cool thing about this, if we were just wanted to start from scratch, we could choose the auto DevOps template. And actually, let me do that just for a second so you can see what that looks like. I'm just gonna copy this file because this is the one that's already edited and clean and done. But if I were to choose the auto DevOps template, here is what the entire auto DevOps pipeline looks like. Okay, so I can add that and then start customizing it, remove the sections that we don't need, add any additional jobs that are custom jobs that we want to include along with Auto DevOps. We can do all of that here. And you can see all of the template jobs for every single job in every stage of Auto DevOps um, is included as a separate template file. In our case, I don't want to use the entire template. I've already gotten rid of all the stuff that I don't need from Auto DevOps. Um, so let me just go rename this file again. And we'll commit these changes and we'll see what happens um, in terms of changing our pipeline. 
going to commit directly to master. In our case, it doesn't matter because we have the same jobs are going to run regardless because we've removed anything related to deployments and review apps. So now we can go ahead and we can look at what the new pipeline looks like. The pipeline will get kicked off as soon as we commit and push changes to our repository. And here we can see now we only have a secret detection job running. Okay, so that's great. So now we have a single job running based on including a template from our auto DevOps pipeline, including the secret detection job template. And we can start to enable this for every project. Now, a couple of things to remember if you're trying to figure out how are we going to roll this out at scale, you can create project templates that automatically or already have a GitLab CI YAML file in it. So this is a starting point for teams to use. Okay, so as soon as teams uh, create the repository from that template, they're automatically going to have this secret detection job running because we have a GitLab CI YAML file in their repository. And then you don't need to enable auto DevOps or set variables at all. Um, this will automatically start running. Now, a lot of people have questions about, okay, how do we prevent people from making changes to our uh, GitLab CI YAML file. So I'm not gonna show it here, but there is this concept of code owners. So certain people that have to approve any changes that get merged um, for certain types of files. So that's an option that can be set at each project to at least make sure that somebody is reviewing um, the GitLab CI YAML file changes. Um, before they're merged to master and used by everybody else. Um, there's also an option, and this is an area we're actively working on, so we're actively improving this um, in the near future. But for now, if, if we want to start to write um, some pipeline files for other teams to consume, maybe we're a central DevOps team that's helping teams with automation and helping them with their workflows, and instead of having this GitLab CI YAML file with all the contents directly in each repository, what we could do is take out any common elements, store that as a template in a separate project, and just like we include the, the template that GitLab provides for secret detection, we could now also include um, pipeline templates that exist in other repositories that we're managing as that automation team that's helping teams build out their workflows. Right, so I'm gonna take you through that next. So I have a separate project here. So this project that we've been using is this Tanuki Corp Spring app. And again, we're just using secret detection scanning on this particular project right now. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created a pipeline templates project and it's just a separate project. Um, I put this in a compliance subgroup so we can store all of the things that we're locking down and kind of automating for all teams to use in a, in a single place, um, provide the appropriate permissions for people on our automation team to be able to modify uh, these projects and the files within them. And within this pipeline templates project, I've created a security scans uh, YAML file. So this security scans YAML file is going to look familiar. It's all of the content from that pipeline that we just used, but now we're going to store that in a separate repository that you know, fewer people have permission to change. What we wanna do is in our individual uh, development team project, our application project, we want to refer to this security scans YAML file um, instead of, um, reproducing it in every single project that we're using. So we can do that. And I'm going to actually go on in here to our uh, application and edit the pipeline file for this application repository. And I'm going to remove everything except for the include right now. And what I'm going to do is use an include syntax that allows me to point to that other project that we've created. Now the include syntax um, is here in the documentation. Uh, we can include a file from another project. So that's what I'm going to use as a starting point. I'll put the documentation 
link in the, the description of this whoops, video as well. Um, what did I just do? Let's try that again. Copy and paste and then get rid of this top level include. Okay, so for the project, I need the full path to the project. Um, so I'm on gitlab.com and I am in Julie Byrne demo slash compliance slash uh, pipeline templates. So I am going to use that as the path to the project. And then for the file name, I'm going to put the path in the repository to that particular file. So in my particular case, it's called pipeline templates and then security scans.yaml. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to say that this is security scans.yaml. Uh, underscore. Okay, so now I have the path to the project and then the path to the file, the template file in that project. And that should be all I need to do um, to then have this project use the pipeline file that was defined as the template in this other project. I'm going to say using central template. And go ahead and commit those changes. <laughs> it does not exist. Project Julie Burn demo compliance pipeline templates. Oh, well, my bad. Let's fix that. Pipeline templates is the project name. Security scans is in the root level. So that was my bad. That was me. Let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, if you did have a directory structure and your YAML file in that directory structure, you would put the path there. Um, these files are in the root level. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that and commit my changes. Now, since I committed my changes, um, that's a push to the repository. So whatever this GitLab CI YAML file dictates that we run for pipeline is automatically gonna be run. Okay, so now we see the new pipeline that has been invoked. And we see it has a secret detection scan because that was the code defined in our centralized template. Okay, and we see that it's run successfully. So now you can start to build out additional jobs in that same template file, or you can start to build out other jobs, um, other YAML templates. Um, however you want to, uh, and include any set of templates that you want to in jobs and individual projects. Okay, typically if it's a case where you're just going to define a standard pipeline for teams to consume, you would have all of those jobs for that particular application type defined within a single YAML file. And then remember that there still needs to be a GitLab CI YAML file in each project and then points to the job definitions in those other templates that you've created. Okay, but you can include more than one of these if you wanted to. So hopefully that gets you started with including templates as part of CI. There is a lot more to this, but I wanted to start with the very basics of how to start with auto DevOps and then how to build upon it to um, start to define custom sets of automated pipelines for teams that use the best of auto DevOps that you want to use, but also start including other types of jobs that those teams will want to use with their pipelines. Thanks for listening.